Yeah. Mason County Joint <coughs> Planning and Commission is now in session. Roll call, do John Hutchings. Here. John Bess. Here. Leslie Myers. Here. David Reed. Here. Kirby Rosser. Lindsey Phillips. Here. Rick Lawrence. Here. Eric Woods. George Larcher. I'm here. Michael Clark. Here. Okay, next on the list is the minutes for February 7th. Is there any corrections, deletions, or additions needed to be made before I ask for a motion? Hearing none, do I have a motion to accept the minutes of February 7th? So moved. Support. Do I have a second? Second. Tom? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No old business, new business. Yes, George, you want to just keep up on the yeah, we, yeah, we need a uh, we need a motion. motion. Motion to go out of our regular meeting into a public hearing. So moved. Okay, Rick, do I have a second? I'll second. John, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're in a public hearing. All right. Everyone, thank you. <clears throat> for attending our only public meeting, our public hearing, excuse me, of this meeting. It is in regards to the zoning map amendment for Melanie Denham for the property located at 151 West Maple Leaf Road. At this time, I would like to offer into evidence, um, evidence that uh, uh, this public hearing was noticed according to state law. Here is a signed affidavit stating that uh, first class mail was sent to adjoining property owners. Here is an image of the sign that I erected on the property. And here is a copy of the digital tear sheet used to generate the advertisement in the ledger independent. It's really small, but it's right there. All members of the public will be given the opportunity to speak on this matter. We require that you state your names and addresses <coughs> for the record. Are there any members of the public present who wish to speak on this matter? Okay, let's go ahead and swear in the applicant. You would stand up, please. Raise your right hand. Yes, do you swear or otherwise affirm to tell the truth? Please say I do. I do. Excellent. At this time, I welcome the applicant to address the plan. I'm Melanie Denham. Thank you all for allowing me to present in front of you. And I need to tell you that I need to thank George Larger and many people at the city because I have asked numerous amounts of questions, probably even to Michael Clark. Um, so I want to publicly say I appreciate them answering in a very professional manner. I purchased the property at 151 West Maple Leaf Road. Um, June, excuse me, June of 2022. And when I first purchased it, it was basically a jungle. So I worked with the uh, Mason County Extension Office, Macy Fawns, and I said, Macy, I need to know if I have any hardwood trees I need to save because it's looking like a lot of, shall we say, junk uh, or invasive materials. And <clears throat> she told me about a free service out of Moorhead. Um, there's the Forest Service there has a free service. They'll come and look at your property and say, okay, you need to save this or you need to get away, do away with this or whatever. So a guy came in the heat of the day in June of 2022, looked the whole place over and said, basically, you might as well level it off. He said, you do not have one hardwood tree on the place. So I'm a big proponent of green space, so that was a little difficult, but I did as he said, and so it was... Um, it was all taken out. Um, so that's why the 5.042 acres looks very naked right now. In June of 2023, um, I came here before the Board of Adjustment and talked to the members about getting the r one these designation changed to duplexes. So in what I believe George has given you, this sheet sort of outlines what the surveyor sent to me of what it would look like. Very huge yards and seven buildings, which would be 14 duplexes. So I'm hoping to live there myself, and I am I love to mow and weed eat, but I'm getting to where that's not my favorite thing to do anymore. 
So I talked to George. George says, well, here's some options. So that's why I'm here before you this evening. The um, other piece of paper that kind of lines out PH1, that's what I'm requesting to do with the property. Um, everybody has those sheets, correct? Okay, thanks. Um, the surveyor is currently working on a demographic map of the property. I have already talked to a civil engineer. I met with her a couple of weeks ago on the property. So what she will be doing will be taking the demographic map and deciding where all of the utilities will go, how um, you know, the water and sewer come into the property to service what I'm proposing to build. And um, we talked at length about the water runoff and how all that will be handled. So. And then Rick Bevins owns property behind me, so we're working together on, um, I'll, I'll have to have access through his property to hook onto the sewer manhole. Um, and then he's talking about maybe doing some development behind me so he would need access on my road through the property. But that's all things for the future. Um, the development plan will be what the, um, civil engineer will be working on. That's, I'm waiting till after this meeting to talk to her more about that, but uh, that's a plan. I've talked to David Hoard about everything, so we're kind of on target um, with everything. I just need to know some comments or thoughts from you all, or if you have any questions before I continue. Will all the duplexes be accessed through the one road or the ones on the front will they have their own access off of maple leaves? No, there will be one road into the property. Okay. I think that would be, shall we say, a train wreck if there were multiple mm -hmm. entrances for maple leaves. <clears throat> Good question. Travis McGlone is, did the initial survey on the property and he's, he's done these two documents that you have a copy of. Anybody else have any questions? Do we know what Bevin's property is currently zoned at? R1B. Is it? Isn't that correct, George? Yeah, it's the same R1B. as the okay. just heard currently. Not duplexes, though. He didn't do the conditional use for duplexes. The plan um, that I'm proposing fits with the comprehensive plan for Maysville and Mason County. But I, I was concerned on the first drawing about the sizes of the yards because even if senior citizens live there or people with small children, what, who, whomever eventually would locate there, that's what I'm hearing and seeing from people that have contacted me about this that was just too big of a yard to deal with. So I think it's a great location and I think it would be an asset for Maysville. And that's my opinion, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> What's the size of the unit you're anticipating? Square footage of the unit? Good question. Did you get the picture that kind of looks like this? Yes, ma'am. Okay, it has, it has, um, it says for both 2,734 square feet. The layout would probably be close, a little bit over 1,400 for each side. Okay, that's not on my copy. Great. Okay. Did you get a picture of the? Did you get a picture yes, of the building? Yes. Okay. We kind of chose that because if you're looking straight at it from Maple Leaf, you won't see two garage doors. It was just something a little different. That's certainly a huge need for it. George, am I correct in thinking that the reason that she's making this application is because she wants to, it's because of lot size so she can put more units 
onto this piece of ground? Yes. Okay. Everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. One thing I might state too, um, after talking to the civil engineer the other day, there will be um, probably 12 buildings, 24 units total, because, um, and it may go past 26, but we're allowing for some um, space for, I forget what it's called, where the, to take care of the water. There may be one lot, one lot lost because of that. So, you know, there might not be quite as many as this, this drawing shows. I just wanted to tell you that. Do you all want to um, close the public hearing before I talk about this? Or do you guys want to talk about the staff report? I'll move to close the hearing. Yeah. Okay, we've got a motion to close the hearing. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Lizzie. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're back in. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> as with uh, every rezoning, I remind you all that um, while it is nice that we get details on the proposal of, of what the applicant is looking to do, what the question you're really asking is whether or not it's appropriate to change zoning classification from one to two. Um, in this particular case, uh, Michael Clark is correct. Um, the problem with the conditional use permit is that is density. Um, getting the conditional use permit in R1B is an exception, so you still have to deal with the large lot sizes that are inherent to single family dwellings, which are significantly larger than the minimum lot sizes for duplex. Gate 1 is more designed for denser housing than R1B. Um, and uh, it is explicitly forbidden by state statute um, to get any sort of variance to reduce lot sizes uh, because that would be an effective rezoning which the boards of adjustment don't have the authority to only you all have the authority to make your application for that. Um, well, this, this is a fairly simple uh, application. Um, I, uh, you know, you've got the three-prong test from KRS 100.213. Um, my conclusion was this was this this application was consistent with the comprehensive plan because the the land is residential and the comprehensive plan doesn't have the granularity to distinguish between types of residential, and um, we have uh, different statements about increasing the housing supply, which is you know, even more pressing than it was back when the, copy, the, the current comprehensive plan was authored. Um, also, um, West Maple Leaf is a fairly mixed use road. You have schools, churches, single family dwellings. Uh, this particular application is not without precedent because you have Maple Ridge, that's TH1, and you have the Manimsha uh, development, which is multifamily. So you've got both duplexes and multifamily pretty close by. So it is consistent with the mixed use uh, character of the, of the uh, of Maple, uh, West Maple Ridge. So, do I have any questions? Questions? Do I have a motion to accept or reject? A motion to accept it as presented. Okay, got a motion. To I, I think that I, I think you ought to state some rationale in your motion, and I think it can be as simple as uh, the requested rezoning is in agreement with the comprehensive plan. Um, Increased uh, increased housing is needed in the community. Uh, so moved uh, that it is con in conjunction with the plan, with comprehensive plan, and uh, we certainly need additional housing, and it appears to be uh, both needed and in a proper location. I think I mentioned in my staff report that even the state is trying to address the housing crisis, which the state usually lags behind several years. So, so we're always ahead of the state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a 
Oh, we're good. All right, a yes or an aye would be to uh, concur with the motion to approve this rezoning cap uh, application. Um, a nay would be to attempt to shoot down the motion, but even if the nays have it, we would still have to have a motion to deny the application. John Hutchins? Uh, yes. John Bess? Yes. Leslie Myers? Yes. Lindsey Phillips? Yes. Rick Lawrence? Yes. Okay. Motion is carried. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, real quick, as you all know, uh, the city passed KRS 100.2111, uh, which means that um, after final action by this body, which will be approval of the findings of fact at the next meeting, if no one comes forward, and that includes the, uh, the city commission itself, to request that this process, the old process be adhered to, then this rezoning becomes, your recommendation becomes law in 21 days. So just. Good. Good. Okay, uh, I was hoping to have something more formal for you all, but Allison never got back to me, and I'm not sure that she actually had something put together regarding um, how the, the uh, public meetings shook out. The one thing I do remember that she said was that um, the outcomes weren't unexpected. You know, that's something that she says in just about every meeting, is that the data that she sees is pretty typical of, of virtually every other community like ours in Kentucky. Uh, the one thing that was decided at the, at the most recent meeting is that she and her team are going to, um, <coughs> for the next, next meeting, which is on Tuesday, March 26th, at uh, 6 p.m. in here, I think that's what that is. Um, they are going to start and have some goals and objectives ready for the steering committee to start um, you know, offering those. So uh, she thought that that was probably a better use of the steering committee's time than having the steering committee sit down and try to offer them you know, uh, themselves. It would be you know, best if she at least gets the ball rolling and then the steering committee can, you know, change things and edit things, et cetera, et cetera. That's, uh, that's really all I have for the, the comments and plan update. Okay, we'll we'll the, the, we'll say that the comments that we received at the various meetings were pretty consistent. Yeah. Uh, the concerns were the same, solutions proposed were the same, so it was uh, fairly consistent across the board. It's, it's just, and and I, I think <clears throat> something she said was that crafting, you know, reasonable goals and objectives. Because you know, I, I kept saying I wanted a, a, an outside interview downtown. Well, that's, that's not what we have, but you know, keeping in mind what our resources are and crafting goals and objectives. That's what the, the, the goal. Is. <coughs> Anybody else? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you.